Hi, everybody. My name is Sam, and I'm here to talk about security today. Uh, if you had a chance to read the description, you'll see this talk is sort of split up into two parts. The first part is really aimed at everyone, whether you're a developer or a user, anyone who has any sort of management role on a site and has any sort of responsibility for keeping it secure. So that I can sort of know how to focus the talk today. Um, you raise your hand if you develop plugins, themes, custom themes, PHP stuff. Okay. All right. So we will uh, make sure to get on everything. A little bit about me. I'm Sam from Maine. Uh, Woo! Actually, we, we seem to have a lot of Mainers in here. So that's uh, good. Thank you for coming out. Uh, I started coding with HyperCard in 1990 and uh, have been doing PHP since 97 and developing since Word, developing with WordPress since 06. In 07, uh, I moved my, uh, my agency to be focused exclusively on WordPress, so that's what we've done since then. Uh, we are based out of Bath, Maine, and I'm also the lead developer of a project called Group Protect. Uh, who in here is familiar with Group Protect? Got some hands? Cool. Um, just to give you a, uh, a little quick spiel on that, uh, we are the first distributed brute force attack protection plugin. Um, and so, who in here is familiar with a brute force attack? Cool. So, you know, essentially, someone comes to your website with a computer and they try every password they possibly can until they break in. And for a long time, this was pretty easy to defend against with plugins like limit login attempts, where it would watch, and if someone had a failed uh, attempt to access your site more than eight times, it would block them out of accessing your site, which worked really well for a long time. And then the botnets got smarter. And so the way that uh, brute force attacks work now is there's a, uh, a huge distributed botnet out there, which are you know, maybe your mom's computer or uh, your brother's computer that has vi a virus on it. And it's going to talk to other computers that are a part of this botnet, and they're going to try and attack your site together. So computer A might try and get in with eight different passwords, and if none of those work, then it's going to pass it on to computer B, who's going to try eight times until it gets blocked, and pass it on to computer C. So by doing that, they're able to get around the IP block. What we've done with Brute Protect is create an API very similar to the way a Kismet works to block spam. We work to block uh, brute force attacks. So when someone tries a password on your site and fails, we report that back to a central repository so we're able to identify who these bots are and block them from being able to get into your site. On that front, we launched the plugin six months ago and we are installed on 14,000 sites at this point in time. That represents 7 one-thousandth of 1% 1 of all WordPress websites. It is a tiny fraction. And with just that small fraction in the last six months, we blocked this many attacks. Over 10 million, almost 10 and a half million. So if you uh, multiply that out to be looking at all of the sites out there, you're talking well into the billions of attacks per day across the WordPress infrastructure. So this is a very serious problem that's attacking every one of your sites, I can guarantee it. Uh, you know, we, we keep some basic statistics and uh, we've seen of those 14,000 sites, only about 200 have never had at least one attack attempt. So almost every site out there is getting hit. I'm going to go over some things in my talk today that are going to help you get a little bit of a grasp on best practices here, but you're not going to be 100% secure. You need to know a little bit about what's going on out there, but when, if you get hacked, don't come to me and say, Sam, uh, it's your fault, fix it. <laughs> It can be useful to know a little bit about the types of attacks that are going on out there. And these are some of the main types of attack. Uh, first being a, a pharma or affiliate hack. And so what they're going to do 
is get into your website and try and embed a link to go buy Viagra. They're try, trying to uh, embed an affiliate link. So if one out of a billion people happens to click on it, they might make a dollar. And the interesting thing here is very few people actually click these links, but it's so inexpensive to create these attacks that it really only needs to be one out of, out of a billion. To, uh, to make it worthwhile. There's link injection, which is uh, part of Black Hat SEO. It doesn't really work all that well anymore, but people still try it where they want to uh, link back to another site to try and build that Google juice. Hacktivism, you may see where uh, you have uh, your, your site is replaced with free Chechnya or uh, you know whatever happens to be the uh, hacker's cause of the day. Drive-by downloads. This is how a lot of this uh, this malware gets spread, and these uh, you know, these these botnets get built. Someone goes to your website, it automatically downloads a piece of software onto their computer, that installs this virus, and then the cycle continues. Um, there are also redirects where they're going to take people who are coming to your website and redirect them to uh, to their website. A lot of these. Uh, Hacks are very smart, where they may only show up if it's a link injection hack, they may only show up to the search engines, and you're never going to see that. It can detect if you are the admin by your IP address, and it's never going to show the attack to you, so it'll just show it to your visitors, so that you're not going to see it. Really, they've, uh, they've tried to become very creative in making sure that you're not going to, to catch it for as long as possible. So, you know, it, it's important... Search for your site on Google regularly, if that's all you do, uh, because you're going to see that warning that pops up that I'm sure you've seen that uh, you know, this site may have been hacked. We're suspecting malware. If you're running Google Webmaster Tools, I would highly recommend it, and that will uh, also notify you if they detect a hack. So one of the first questions that you need to ask yourself as a site admin is how secure do you need to be? There are different requirements for different companies. You know, it's, it's a whole uh, different ballgame if you're posting pictures of your cat versus if you're selling a million dollars a day on an e-commerce site. So, you know, it's good to be realistic and uh, make that decision on what's important. It's also important to know how people are getting into your site and knowing your weaknesses. Are you using public Wi-Fi? This is the biggest one that I see every couple of months. If you connect over a network like the one here in this building, and then you log into your website, anyone else on that, uh, on that network can get your credentials. Since this is an unsecured network, it's open, you didn't have to enter a password when you first selected it from the drop-down menu, that means your data is not encrypted going between your computer and their router. Uh, so be careful when you're going to any non-SSL site over public Wi-Fi. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. How are you transferring files? If you're using FTP, it's not a secure uh, method to transfer files. And you need to be careful. We'll talk a little bit more about that as well. How's your site hosted? Are you in a, uh, in a secure uh, VPS-type environment? Or are you on a shared host that uh, maybe doesn't have rigid walls in between sites? What plugins are you using? If you're, uh, if you're running plugins that, you know, maybe they, they add one thing that, that uh, is useful to your website, but they're also uh, giving a backdoor for hackers, uh, you know, it's something you need to think about. I make a point when I'm installing plugins to either look through the reviews, see how many downloads does this have, how many reviews does it have, do I feel good that this, this plugin is in use by enough of the community that uh, any issues would have been exposed by now? If so, great. If not, I'm going to go through every line of code in every file and make sure that there's no backdoor hidden in there. What theme are you using? This is the exact same issue. Um, and a lot of people think that you're safe 
if you've downloaded that plugin or that theme from the WordPress theme repository. It's true that they do go through and, and review the code when you first list a plugin or you first list a theme, but after that point, you can update it as often as you'd like, and there's no review on that code unless there are complaints. So if it's a, uh, if it's a lesser used plugin or a lesser used theme, <laughs> yeah, if it's a lesser used plugin or a lesser used theme, it's very possible that it, uh, it hasn't been caught yet. And uh, the last thing is to make sure you're up to date. And luckily with WordPress 3.7, they've started rolling out these uh, automatic updates automagically. Uh, so don't turn that off unless you really need to. So first we're going to talk a little bit about how to protect yourself. The first thing I would highly recommend, whether you are a developer or just a user, add this line to your wp-config.php. You can get this off of my slides. This turns off the file editor that's built into WordPress, which is a really easy way if someone gets into your site to start editing your files. And the issue is, once they get in, 95% of the time they're going to put in a backdoor where they're able to get in over and over again. So once they've come in the first time, it's going to be really hard to find what they left behind so they can get in in the future. One thing I see a lot is people sending passwords through email. Email is an inherently insecure medium, and you shouldn't put anything in an email that you wouldn't put on a postcard. So I built a free service years ago called quickforget.com that allows you to send passwords through an email. It's essentially a uh, uh, self-destruct message, uh, so it'll only last for a certain number of hours or a certain number of opens. There are other similar tools out there. Keep your WordPress up to date. Keep your plugins up to date. Keep your themes up to date. That said, with keeping plugins and themes up to date, it goes back to what we were just talking about, which is if it's a lesser used plugin that you maybe don't really trust, when you update it, check the code. Uh, which brings us to the last point, only use plugins that you trust. Uh, it can be really dangerous to let someone else just run code on your site. Most of the plugins out there are not malicious at all, so don't, you know, don't be scared and run away, but do use your head. So, when you're first setting up WordPress, one of the things you're going to hear a lot, and this was uh, part of the, the recent uh, botnet distributed attack, is you know, always change your username. Change your username away from admin. Sure, you can do that, and it's not a bad idea. But it's also not you know, going to make you as secure as you think. It's fairly easy for someone with the right scripts to detect what your usernames are. Uh, so... Don't just change your username and think that you're secure. Your table prefix is, I would say, more important to change away from being WP underscore. The reason for this is, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about injection attacks where someone injects some uh, database code to run on your site. If your table prefix is WP underscore, they're able to guess it. If it's WP underscore go cardinals, then... Uh, they're going to have a harder time guessing it. So I would highly recommend that table prefix. You also need to protect against brute force attacks. And we talked about this a little bit. Um, you know, there are some other plugins out there, limit login attempts, login lockdown. WordFence has a portion that, uh, that does the same thing as the other two as far as protecting against brute force attacks. <coughs> Obviously, I recommend uh, Brute Protect. Uh, if you want to go further, you can also use your HT Access and HT Password files to create a secondary layer of security over your login page. So when someone tries to go to your login page, first they have to enter a, a server username and password, and then they have to enter your blog username and password. Personally, I think it's a pain. Uh, when those dialogues pop up, most uh, 
password saving tools like 1Password aren't able to paste into them. So uh, I don't do that, but it is, it is another way around it. I already talked about this. It's also really important as you go through to, uh, to develop a backup plan because there's always the possibility that you're going to be hacked no matter how much you do against it. And it's really not that hard to do it. Uh, one thing I would highly recommend is not to trust your host. A lot of hosts say that they provide daily backups, and this may technically be true, but they also may only be able to access it for a, a certain fee. Or uh, that stopped working about four weeks ago, and we haven't gotten around to fixing it yet. Uh, you know, it's it's not something that they use every day a lot of the time, and so it can uh, it can slip. I, seen it not work more often than it does work. There are a number of plugins out there that do uh, perform automatic backups for you. Backup Buddy is a premium plugin that works very well. Uh, WordPress Backup to Dropbox is one of my favorites because it, uh, it just goes right into your Dropbox folder. Uh, it's free. It works well. Back WP up. And then Vault Press is uh, offered by the core team at Automatic, the company that makes WordPress. And it's a premium service, but, uh, you know, they're doing it right. So like we hit on before, it's important to connect to your site carefully. Uh, so if you're connecting over Wi-Fi, you need to either install SSL on your website. This can be a pain. It's, uh, it, it can be expensive depending on your host. Uh, and... If you're running a smaller site, you're not doing e-commerce, it's not really necessary. I would highly recommend using a VPN. Uh, I started using Cloak about three months ago and have just raved about it to everyone I can talk to. Uh, it's a, uh, an app for Mac and uh, iOS devices, and it will automatically detect if you're on an insecure network, and it will protect your connection. Uh, it tunnels everything through their servers, uh, and it, it just works. Uh, it's great. Don't use FTP to connect to your website. Uh, FTP is an inherently insecure protocol. It's been around for, what, 30 years? 30 plus years? It's uh, been around before, uh, before websites, and uh, you know, there wasn't as much to worry about back then, but uh, you can, on almost any host, use SFTP instead of FTP. An SFTP is a file transfer connection that's routed through a shell connection. And so it's, uh, it's much more secure, it's encrypted, uh, and if your host doesn't support either SFTP or FTPS, you need to find a new host because your host is uh, out of touch. I highly recommend using a password manager which enables you to use secure passwords and use a different password for every site. If you, I'm not going to ask anybody to raise your hands, but uh, you know if I'm talking to you and you use the exact same password for every website you connect to and for your phone and for your computer. Websites are getting hacked every few months. Uh, you know, Adobe was hacked, what, three or four months ago. Uh, and in these attacks, it becomes po possible for the attacker to get your password. So imagine this, this scenario, even if it's a site you don't use all that often, uh, you don't think it's a big deal. Hacker gets into it and they have your email address and your password. You're using that same password for your email account. So now they're able to log into your email account and they're able to view the other sites that you're, members to, you're uh, a member to. They can go and then log into those sites. Even if you're not using the same password there, they can reset your password because they can use the forgot your password link because they're in your email. At this point, they're able to go into any site where you have saved credit card information and make more purchases on your behalf, uh, and uh, so on and so forth. So, especially even if you are going to use the same password for everything, don't use that password for your email. At the very least, change your email password. But 
a program like One Password uh, for the Mac. I think there's uh, any other suggestion? Last Pass, uh, Key Pass, key pass uh, makes it really easy to have a different secure password for every uh, every site you go to. Keep things separated, um, and it, it's no longer a big uh, big issue. You also want to consider two-factor authentication, and. Uh, Two-factor authentication for a long time had a, a reputation for being very, very difficult. Uh, and if you're not familiar, two-factor authentication, you go, you enter your username, your password, it texts you a number, or you have to open, uh, you know, a, a special app, or you have, to, uh, you know, you have a rolling code generator in your pocket, whatever it is, uh, but you have to enter another piece of information. Um, this is getting easier with apps like Google Authenticator, and there's also a great tool out from Brennan here uh, called Clef. And what Clef allows you to do, this is really cool. If you haven't tried it out yet, I would highly recommend it. Uh, How do you, spell you can that? install it as a plugin. You install it on your phone. It takes -E 30 seconds. -E Clef, C L E F. Thank you. Yep. And uh, what's the website? Getclef.com. And uh, you install this app on your phone. When you go to your WordPress site, there's a big blue button that says log in with Clef. You hit that, a really cool looking animation pops up. You point your phone at it, it syncs, and it knows who you are. You don't have to enter your password at all, and you're just into your site, and it is uh, wicked sweet. <laughs> All right, so that is uh, the user portion of the talk. Do you guys have any questions uh, on, on that side of things? So say you have um, authentication through like a setup system like Kerberos. Uh -huh. Would you um, still suggest to have these kind of plugins? Uh, I mean, obviously, a different password is for everything that you use is something right. you should still practice, but would a plugin like this still help us? Now, if, if you're using Kerberos for your authentication, do you allow users to log in with just a username and password, or do they have to opt for Kerberos? It's always Kerberos. Okay. In that case, you're probably pretty well protected against brute force attacks. The, the things you need to watch out for, we'll sort of go over a little bit in the developer side of things, uh, as far as file permissions and uh, FTP. Uh, you know, definitely make sure that they're connecting uh, if you're not running SSL. You know. Yeah. Um, I use uh, Better uh, WP uh -huh. Security and um, have seen in the user logs when brute force attacks or logging in through the admin, say password, yep. the username has happened. And I've kind of helplessly and nervously watched those logs get populated. Yep. Um, what should I do when, that, when I witness that's going on? Is there things I can do or just in sitting behind the wall hoping? It doesn't, it doesn't sound I would highly recommend a plugin called Brute Protect. <laughs> We've actually, I, I've heard from a number of users with similar uh, situations over just the last few weeks. Um, we rolled out a, a couple performance updates, and what they found, if they were getting heavily hit, it severely reduced their server load as well. Uh, because we, we stopped them before they even had the ability to enter a username and password. And we do it sort of earlier than a normal plugin hook. Uh, so most of the other security plugins, when, you, uh, when it gets to blocking one of those attacks, there are already 40 to 60 database queries that happen before it. And you know, having that happen a thousand times, thousands of times, can really slow down your server. With Brute Protect, uh, before we block a bad IP, it's only three database calls. So it's much lighter and uh, maybe able to help you speed up there. Um, if you do have a recurring issue and you want, you want to only use better WP security, by the way, you can install both plugins and they're, uh, they're not going to fight with each other. Um, but if, if you do want to just use better WP security, you can always use uh, something like the HT access. Uh, to kill that login page completely while you're under attack. Uh, but 
you know, that can be a real hassle, and if you're not watching it, you know, the issue comes back up. Hi, Ethan. Are these um, plugins also available for post review of, of your sites to do the due diligence, maybe after the fact, just to see where you are with post attacks and things like that? Or preventative things only? Well, the, these tools are preventative. You know, after the attack, generally, uh, it's going to require, if, if you want to figure out what went on, someone to go through your server logs. Uh, you know, cleaning up an attack could be an entire afternoon of talks on its own. It's uh, a nightmare. And so it's really good to sort of try and get in there ahead of things if possible. Uh, hi. Uh, when, when changing the database prefix from uh -huh. WP underscore, uh, do I have to just add something after the underscore, or can I delete the whole thing and put in anything there? Is there any syntax? Any way about it. Um, you know, you you don't have to stick to any uh, any particular naming convention. I don't think you can use special characters. You can't use spaces. Um, but aside from that, uh, I think there's a maximum length of maybe 16 characters. I could use Dave yeah. instead of WP underscore. Absolutely. You know, and, and uh, uh, as long as you don't use WP, don't use like WP1. You know, don't use anything that's that's okay. very close. You know. Okay. Thanks. Um, they talked about word fence in one yep. of the other sessions. How does that play with your brute force or, or um, are they complementary? Yeah. So so brute protect. Uh, we have not encountered any plugins <coughs> that we don't work with. Uh, a lot of people are running brute protect in addition to word fence or better WP security. Do you suggest that? It depends on uh, sort of what attack vectors you're you're looking at preventing. Uh, it's certainly not going to hurt anything to run both. Um, you know, we're working on developing more functionality as well. So at some point, it will be completely redundant, but it certainly doesn't hurt. All right. Any more user questions? One more. All right. In terms of backup, um, some of the backup plugins you talked about, are they backing up just the database only, or are there other parts of the site, like in the WP content folder, that they take care of as well? Almost all of the backup plugins will allow you to select whether you want to back up just the database, or you want to back up um, the database and your, uh, your WP content, your uploads, your, uh, your themes. Generally, it's just the uploads that you need to. All right. Any other questions on that? Okay. If you're not interested, oh, one more. Yeah, just the uh, get left, I guess. Yeah. You're not the only one. I mean, uh, the developer or designer are not the only one logging in. The client could log in. Another agency could log in. Then it, it needs to be for every user, I assume, right? It, it doesn't have to be. Users can still log in with their username and password. Actually, can we get that mic? That microphone. Do you want to just speak to that really quickly, Brendan? Yeah, so it's something you can enable alongside passwords, and also everyone who you want to give access to the website could be using it. So um, Clef is an option for an increased security login, but it's not something that the minute you install it, it takes over and blocks everything else. So um, you can use it as much or as little as you want, and it will never like block people out who you are hoping to get it. And at Brew Protect, we like Clef so much that we're going to be adding a one-click install button into Brew Protect. So if you install Brew Protect this coming week, that button will be there so you can install Clef as well, and they'll play really nicely together. All right, any other user questions? So if anyone is going to get in uh, and not enjoy the PHP part of this, you're welcome to leave. I won't be hurt. Thank you. But, uh, just, oh, just we got 10 minutes, so we got to hurry. I'm going to make one quick announcement yeah. if people are leaving for, for another session. Um, bring your badges for snacks because we have another outside user group here on the same floor, so we will be checking. Um, and the second thing is that we made a typo, we made a mistake. North Point Digital is the snack provider, so they're tasting little cakes. 
Uh -oh. Be sure to thank them and visit their booth. Thanks, Kurt. All right. Yeah. Did you say you're posting your slides? Yeah, my slides are online. It's hotchkissconsulting.com slash A-L-O-T. Oh, dot net. And they, they redirect together. And uh, yeah, if you guys want, we've got group protect stickers and business cards up here. All right, time to hit code for 10 minutes. So uh, the first thing you want to make sure you do when you are developing for WordPress, whether it's plugins or, uh, or themes, if you're doing code for one client or you're doing something that you want to release after the community in general, don't get SQL injected. So how do we do that? You don't write your own queries if you don't have to. Uh, most of you probably are pretty familiar with uh, MySQL, and if you're anything like me, you were writing SQL queries long before you started messing with WordPress. And so it can be really easy to fall back into the habit of just write the query. The helper functions that are in WordPress are awesome, and they will save you so much time because all of the data is automatically escaped. So you don't have to worry about someone injecting if you use the WPDB class to do your inserts and updates. Uh, so when you're inserting a new row, you can do WPDB insert, your table, and then an array of what the column is and what the value, value is. Uh, one thing to watch out for here, if you are, uh, say, inserting information that you got out of a form, don't just use the post object here because someone could add more columns to a post object. If you're doing updates, for example, uh, they could rewrite the ID, they could do uh, some malicious stuff there. So make sure that you are explicitly stating what columns you're expecting and only put those in. If you need to write your own query, use WPDB prepare. And what this is going to do is allow you to uh, pass your information in and have it, uh, have it parsed out so that uh, you know you're not having uh, extra queries injected. Is there anyone in here who's not familiar with the, the way a, uh, a SQL injection attack works? Don't be ashamed. What's that? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Another thing that it's important to watch out for is potential JavaScript, JavaScript injections. So uh, someone may put into a, uh, a comment or a custom field on your site some code that's going to cause the user's browser to automatically download their malware. So we want to be sure that this isn't happening. If you're not familiar with codex.wordpress.org slash data validation, become familiar with it. This is a great tutorial on how you should be validating data. You always want to pick the strictest validation that will always work for what you're spitting out. So you never want to trust your data, even your own data coming out of your own database. Who knows what happened? Who knows how it got there? Why not be safe? So if you're outputting into your theme, echo title, echo body, this is really easy. You know, we're going to escape the attributes out of title, and we're going to run WP cases on the body to make sure that we're not running any malicious code that might have happened to uh, hide in the database. I, I won't go fully into all the different methods of validation, but great instructions there. It's also important that you use nonces. Um, anybody not familiar with the idea of a nonce? Okay. I'm sure there are other people who aren't raising their hands. So. <laughs> when you submit a form or, uh, or a link, a nonce is a one-time use token. So it may be a hidden field in the form. It may be something that goes at the end of the link to say, this is only going to work once. It lets you know that that form was generated by your server. Or it lets you know that that link was generated by your server, and it lets you know that that link has already been used or that form has already been submitted. 
This keeps a man in the middle attack from being able to submit a form a thousand times over from its own server. It prevents someone from going into an email you know, from three years ago and clicking it, and maybe that uh, user ID belongs to someone else at this point. Uh, you know, there, there are a number of ways that can be used to do things that you may not want. WordPress has made nonces very, very simple. Uh, you can use WP nonce field to generate a hidden field that's going to go into your form on the front end. And you can use WP verify nonce uh, when you get that back to, uh, to make sure that that is a valid nonce. If it's not, you know, then you, uh, you spit out something about how you're trying to do something tricky. Uh, is this per, uh, per request or is it per session? Okay. It's per request. It's per request. Every time a form is submitted, it has an independent nonce. Um, so you'll see, like, if you generate a WP logout URL, it's going to have that WP nonce at the end of the URL so that that's not used over and over. If you've ever tried to just copy and paste a logout URL rather than using the function for it, and it doesn't work and it looks ugly, that's why. You need to use the built-in functions to generate those links. Uh, you can also nonce URLs. Uh, so if you need to email it using that, uh, that function. Again, the codex is your best friend. Uh, you know, I spend hours and hours in there every day. Uh, it's a whole lot easier than uh, trying to remember how to do everything. And so, you know, if you know I should be using a nonce, type in nonce. It's all going to come up and, and show you how to use it for your application. Uh, do keep in mind that nonces break after 24 hours. So if you're sending someone a validation link, uh, they need to click it within 24 hours or that nonce isn't going to work anymore. It's also important to remember when you're trying to secure a web application that you're building, you're trying to secure a website that you're building, WordPress is only a small part of your web stack. You know, if you think about all of the things that are installed on your server, from the core to the version of Linux that you're running, to the version of Apache or Nginx that you're running, the version of uh, MySQL that you're running, all of this builds up to create your web stack. And so securing WordPress is a great place to start because it, it in a lot of ways, is the easiest way to start. Uh, you know, you can install plugins that are going to do a great job. You can change your behaviors. But if you really need to secure your whole stack, either you need to become a security, uh, a server expert, or you need to uh, uh, choose a host wisely that will uh, do a good job uh, at protecting your site. So it's good to uh, really think about who you're hosting with and uh, you know, how to get what you need. One of my biggest frustrations as a web developer is there, there have been more times that I can count that as a, uh, a freelance development firm may have built a site for someone. It could be you know, a $20,000, $25,000 website. And they wince at paying more than $9.99 a month for hosting. And it's absolutely ridiculous for more reasons than just security. You're looking at performance as well. But it's really important to, uh, to evaluate what are your needs? How important is your hosting? How bad would it be if your site got hacked? How bad would it be if your website went down? And uh, spend appropriately. All right. You can get my slides there. I think we have, uh, what, three or four minutes? Yeah, two minutes. Two minutes. Any questions? Yep. Back to the newbie question. Yes. How do you evaluate your host? You want to look at, uh, look at what other people are saying about them. Um, talk to someone who you trust and get recommendations. Uh, finding a good host is really hard. Um, it's taken me years to find a hosting company. Go to that in network solutions. I'm happy with. Uh, <laughs> for, uh, for client sites and larger sites, uh, I would highly recommend a company called Storm On Demand. Um, if you're hosting a single instance WordPress install, uh, companies like WP Engine can be really good. Uh, you know, as a developer, uh, sometimes I don't, yeah, Pagely? 
Yeah, I mean, does that separate your domain name registration from your hosting company? Yes. Too, so you can always point your site somewhere else if you know everything blows up. Yeah, it's easy to get in bed with one company and uh, use them to register your website and uh, and host, but it, it also makes it a little bit harder to break up. Uh, you know, it's you're worried about them not letting you come over and get your stuff. So. Um, see, I've, I had one strategy I've tried, and I was curious if this would work. Um, I've noticed a lot of people, hackers, have been accessing um, uh, like WP Admin PHP or WP Login PHP uh -huh. from, uh, and I, I keep my WordPress install in a subfolder. Okay. So I'm aware that you know, there should not be that file associated with 404. So I've just put a blank file there to, to give them something that you want. Is yeah. that bad, or is that bad? Yeah, it, it certainly isn't hurting anything. Um, most like so is your your site at uh, you know domain.com slash my website.com or my website and there your site is on that subdomain yeah so they're going to be able to find it there uh, you know some will uh, some will stop looking uh, the bots that are out there now some are much stupider than others uh, you know it, it's kind of like uh, the Walking Dead. They're going to keep coming at the gate and coming and coming, and uh, some of them are going to start to figure things out. Uh, uh, do they start to figure things out? I can't scan the zombies. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are your thoughts on uh, moving the WP admin folder to a private folder? You can do that. The, the uh, login point is WP login, not WP admin, um, and so. You know, it may or may not help that. Uh, when you move WP Admin, then it becomes an issue of updating. Uh, you know, I, I really like to keep the WordPress core files where they are, named as they are, and figure out other ways to protect, just so that you can keep working within the WordPress infrastructure. When you do things like that, you can uh, sort of open yourself up to problems down the road with updates. Right. Any other questions? <laughs> Do you recommend uh, the same technique for people trying multi-site networks? Yeah, so uh, one of the things that, that we do, we manage an 1800-site network. And so that's been uh, you know, a good learning experience in security. Uh, Brute Protect is fully multi-site compatible uh, with one API key for all of your sites. Uh, what I was saying with multi-site, some of the WordPress-specific hosts uh, are not as good at handling large multi-site installs, and so it, it uh, gives you some different criteria to look for. What, Brent? Should I update to 3.7? Yes. <laughs> you should update to 3.7 and 3.71 and 3.8. Uh, you know, it's it's really important when you are developing sites, and this is uh, you know, not only a security concern, but but just a general concern. Do things the right way. Use the WordPress APIs. Don't try and hack your own. It can be easier in the moment, but I guarantee you, you are going to uh, appreciate it later if you just take the time to learn the WordPress way to do things. All right, I think we're out of time. Thank you guys.